welcome to Sinewave! Silently connecting everyone around the world. So the problem is that people with hearing impediments often have difficulty communicating with others. And this isn't just a one-sided affair. Most of the time, people who also communicate with anyone with hearing impediments often experience the same type of frustration. For example, when you go to a convenience store or whatever location to pick up a product, there's an interaction between you and the sales clerk. And most of this time, the interaction is actually so seamless that you probably don't even realize it's happening. It's become every day. But with, for someone with a hearing impediment, it's very different. And it becomes a very complicated interaction. And with that interaction, most of the times it involves either having to write or having to do sign language. But most of the times, the clerks, people behind the desk, or whoever's interacting with them don't actually know how to use sign language. So the problem that we're addressing here and the target market that we're really catering towards is not only people with hearing impediments, but we're also catering this app towards people who interact with those with hearing impediments to simplify both sides of the interaction and allow a smooth communication. So let's talk about the market size that's available to us. There are 360 million people worldwide that suffer from hearing impairment. And 70 million of those people cur currently know sign language and use sign language regularly. And th that means that 1% of the total population of the world actually uses sign language. That's a very large amount. And, for, and they, they use the, their sign language on a day-to-day -day basis. They go around talking to people that they need to. But if they were to talk, about, talk to a new person who doesn't know sign language, they would really have no way to communicate. As a result, we need to figure out a way to solve that problem. If you're, if you're an average person who, is not, who does not have hearing impairment, you would not be able to communicate with those people. And if you want to solve that problem, you'd have to go out of your way to go to a school to learn how to talk in sign language or learn it yourself, which would be long and arduous and it just wouldn't be worth the effort. Um, but since such a large percentage of the people in the world do have hearing impairments, we feel that we can capture a, a large, larger percentage of people than we normally would have imagined for this. Currently, our projections state that we can capture 10% of the total number of people that have hearing impairments as our potential market for this device. So that, say, you, you do have uh, hearing impairments and you want to be able to talk to somebody, you can just load whatever, load our solution and give it to them so that they can understand what you're talking about. And so, in total, we present, project about 7 million users that we hope to get when we go to market with this idea. Let me introduce the management team. Let's start with me. Frank, I'm the chief expense officer. I bring a lot of qualities to this team. I'm a jack of all trades. I'm from systems design engineering, and I've done just about everything in every type of industry that I could possibly do. Financial, uh, uh, marketing, uh, startups, all the way to big, small, everything. Tried it all. And so I bring to this company my leadership. Through all my experiences, I have I have dealt with many different types of people and this group is a very diverse type of group which I know will bring, uh, will bring our qualities forward and make a very successful product. I also have done a lot of stuff in design and architecture as well as the full development cycle. So I'm prepared to get this product up and going and to our, and to our users and bringing us back the revenue. Let me introduce the next person on our team, Darian Lim, Chief Emotion Officer. Hi, I'm Darian. I'm the second CEO. I'm the Chief Emotions Officer. I work in relations. I work with public relations from externally with the company as well as interrelations from internally with the company. The experience I bring to the table here, I've worked with over a thousand different people, face-to-face -face interactions. I work in sales, marketing. I work with counseling, other people through overcoming hardships. And I've worked with several different large firms, interrelating as well as the technical skills within different projects and design teams. And with these skill sets, I'm here to make sure that our company establishes, develops, and maintains strong, lasting relationships with our customers as well as other large firms and businesses that we're working with. And I'm here to make sure that our company really stays on the path to success. Let me introduce you to the next member of our team, Sachintin. He is our Chief Ethnics Officer. Hi, I'm Sitchin Lin Singh and I'm the Chief Ethnics Officer. I am really glad to be part of this management team because I have lots of experience in the world dealing with very, a variety of people. And as a result, I've gathered a lot of knowledge with regards to technology. 
comes into play. Um, with my wide technological experience, from ranging from small companies to very big companies, who all do do things in very different ways, I can use my expertise to develop the dream that has been laid out by our respective CEOs. Um, since I've worked at many different technological companies and I have a strong passion for technology, I understand what, what would be good and what would not be good with regards to getting our product up and running and fu properly functional given the time frame that we have. And of course, um, how much funding we have built. Um, and since, since I have a huge passion for technology, I understand what is good and what is bad, and more importantly, what is ideal to be used in every situation. I also understand what types of people would be excellent for hiring, and what types of people would be malicious for hiring with regard to uh, getting the work done. And together, we're, the, we're three the three CEOs of Sine Wave. So our product Sine Wave is going to solve the aforementioned problem by converting sign language that we interpret in real time to speech and or displaying just text on the screen. We're going to have an avatar that that basically says the things and like reads all the text. and. In the other case where we want to convert speech to text, sign language and text will have the avatar to actually sign out the movements so the person reading it can see what's going on. We will, and since this is a mobile application, the whole point of this is to make it do all these operations in real time. So our main goal is to have the operations be performed seamlessly so the conversation can happen as intended. And since we want the product to be portable and widely used, we would want our ideal product has is a portable device that can or a mobile device that everybody has in their pockets, and we can use that anywhere around. And, the, and another advantage of using a mobile device is market penetration will be much easier since there will be much lower cost of entry. Since every, most quite a lot of people already own mobile devices, and it would just be asking most of that downloading an application, and installing, and using it. As our team did their market research, we found four main competitors in the domain of sign language interpretation and communication. These four are ProDeaf, Connect Sign Language Translator, Portable Sign Language Translator, and MS Signs. But out of the four, we realized that they are also in the research and development phase, while SignWave is currently the only product that is available right now to be released to market and, well, penetrated market. So, out of the other four as well, only two of them are actually portable. So that would be the last two, Portable Sign Language Translator and MS Signs. And out of the total four, none of them actually have established a two-way communication. They're only one way, which is either speech to sign language or sign language to text. Where Sign Wave actually utilizes a two-way communication channel, which allows either speech to sign or sign to text or text to sign, whichever way works best for the users to interact with one another. So, with any real product, you have to figure out a way to make money. And I'm sure that's what you guys really care about. So, we brainstormed a few ways that you will probably make us money, as with many other applications of a similar nature. The mo most obvious one is selling the applications to users who want to purchase the application through the App Store. Since our product will be mobile first, our product will be sold on the App Store for people that find the need to buy them to make their lives easier. And since this, this is, since this is something that does make people's lives easier, we project that lots of people will go ahead and purchase this. Another way to make money is to sell this application to schools that need to either teach sign language or help people rehabilitate that once they become deaf or something like that. Um, and it, once we start licensing, that's a continuous revenue source. It wouldn't be just a one-time fee. It would be monthly payments that would be made to us. And once we get a large number of users for that, that would be a guaranteed source of income. Another obvious solution is to have advertisements within the application and maybe create a free version of the application for users to try. Um, as a result, we will get revenue from the ads they see and if they, the users would get to sample the application if they, and if they like it, they would be able to buy the application and we would get more money from that. <coughs> and the final and less obvious way of making money is to record data usage of the application. So like how, how frequently is it used, what types of words they use in their, commu in their communication, as well as other data such as like location and um, the people that are involved. And we, could, we would be able to sell that data to companies that use that information to either mine data for better advertising or to other agencies that would find that data value.
the way that our team intends to penetrate the market is we've done some research as to where to find our, the people in our target market. However, the people in our target market, people who have hearing impediments, are very integrated into, into today's society. It's very difficult to really distinguish them. So instead, we tried to target really places where uh, the higher population would be, such as rehabilitation centers, where people who maybe have found out that they are suddenly deaf, or an accident may have caused this, or people just may be who have those type of hearing impediments. And really, we hope to help those people who suddenly have that type of accident, and they're really looking for a way to cope, help them raise awareness of this application so that they see that there is a way for them to communicate regularly, normally with the rest of society. We also plan on advertising uh, to the target market through different forums, basically targeting that market. Anything really that talks about hearing impediments or uh, hearing aids, anything within that even vicinity, we probably target those forums and try to increase our exposure through there. And obviously, we'd also be advertising and putting out marketing through the App Store. I'm going to talk to you about financial planning. This starts uh, in Q2, May 2014. This consists of the initial product development, which is starting a, uh, starting a team of engineers and acquiring the materials to do the beta product. This requires us to have seed financing of $9,000. From there, using that $9,000, by, by Q1 2015, we'll be doing our market development, which we will need further funding by acquiring more sponsors, getting $17,000. By that time, we will be, we'll understand our market as well as have a product, and thus by Q4, December 2015, We'll be able to prove ourselves because we are more confident to our sponsors and to further potential sponsors that we'll get $100,000. Now with that, we will finally get into the market. Our market penetration will develop even further and thus at Q1 2017, we will be building our brand. And at that point, we will be in the market we will understand our market and future markets we can target, as well as our product will have gone through uh, some type of recursion effect that we will keep making it better and better. And thus, this, pro this brand will build so large that we'll get further funding of $300,000. And with this, we will own our product and potentially future products to come. Well, then another question on your mind is, how are you going to get return on your initial investment? Well, through this, this uh, product cycle of three years, we will be having a, a really solid product that will give us return after the first two years, and especially once we're building our brand after three. So we propose, we, we expect that you will get your return after roughly about three to five years with interest. And from there, we will also be building our company and building it bigger and bigger to introduce new products in this problem space. And as we introduce these new types of products, you will get the initial picks on which ones you want to go to market. With that, we would like to conclude SignWave, the world's first mobile sign language application.